are two immutable facts about the horror genre. It's more prone to critical scorn than any other type of movie, and it's also the genre where reviews have the least amount of impact on the mainstream. The horror genre has proven itself impressively critic-proof over the years, because when audiences just want to see some flashy brutality and fringe spookiness, they don't necessarily crave a great script and top-shelf acting. Horror fans are an enthusiastic and forgiving bunch, but beyond that, they know what they like and they aren't about to let pesky critics tell them what they should and shouldn't enjoy. This likely explains why there's sometimes a massive divide between the critical and audience reception of a new horror movie. Now we have already done a list on this very topic, but because the horror genre loves nothing more than sequels, I'm here with some more. So I'm Ellie for What Culture here with 10 more horror movies hated by critics but audiences loved. Number 10, Underworld. Critics didn't have much kind to say about Len Wiseman's 2003 vampire werewolf action at Underworld, largely dismissing it as a stylish yet monotonous genre exercise that came and went without making much of a dent. But general viewers had way more of a blast per its 79% audience approval rating, not to mention the fact that it was a surprise box office hit, grossing almost $100 million worldwide, and in turn kickstarting a wildly popular, if consistently critically eviscerated, five films. Film franchise. Needless to say, the prospect of watching Kate Beckinsale kick ass in skin tight PVC was far more alluring to audiences than critics and resulted in a series with over half a billion dollars in box office receipts thus far. But beyond that, Underworld's gothic style was so perfectly attuned to the mainstream tastes of the early 2000s, and releasing a few years before Twilight as it did, audiences hadn't yet grown tired of seeing vamps and werewolves duke it out. Number 9 House of a Thousand Corpses Rob Zombie is a filmmaker who has been met with an uneven critical and audience reception throughout his entire career, largely due to the willingly revolting, tonally scuzzy nature of his horror movies. And he's never gone gnarlier than his 2003 film House of a Thousand Corpses, which was demolished by critics who felt that while Zombie had nailed the tone and aesthetic of the exploitation subgenre, there was little worthwhile on offer beyond all the rampant bloodletting. Yet the audience approval rating more than tripled the critical score, with almost two-thirds of viewers rating the film favourably, a strong result for a picture so aggressively intended to alienate. Likely aided by Zombie's popularity as a musician, House of a Thousand Corpses actually turned a modest profit at the box office, also helped by its small $7 million budget, enough that Zombie was able to parlay it into a three-film franchise. Though sequel The Devil's Rejects was similarly received far more warmly by general viewers, 2019's belated threequel Three From Hell earned a more mixed response from both sides of the fence. Number 8. The Thing Though John Carpenter's incredible 1982 remake of The Thing indeed has a sturdy tomato meter score of 84%, if Rotten Tomatoes existed back when the film was first released, it would have mustered a mere fraction of that respectable number. Initially, The Thing endured an extremely frosty reception from critics, who dubbed it for its nihilistic tone and nauseating gore effects, with even the great Roger Ebert stating that the film didn't offer much depth outside of its impressive practical effects work. Hell, the tide was so firmly against The Thing that the glorious synth score bafflingly received a worst original score nomination from the Razzies. Above all else, The Thing was perhaps a victim of poor timing, releasing in the same year as less grotesque, more mainstream skewing sci-fi films like E.T., Blade Runner, Poltergeist and Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, and seeming quite unappealing by comparison. Though it flopped at the box office, the movie was reclaimed on home video, where genre enthusiasts discovered and embraced it enough that its esteem skyrocketed throughout the 1980s and 90s. This resulted in a major critical turnaround, and the thing ultimately joining the ranks of the most acclaimed sci-fi horror films of all time. Number 7. Fallen a rare foray into the horror genre for Denzel Washington, Gregory Holbit's Fallen was largely met with critical indifference upon release, with reviewers feeling that it didn't make the most of its intriguing premise, as Washington's detective protagonist hunts down a copycat serial killer with diabolic origins. Audiences of today don't quite agree with critics though, because while Fallen was a brutal box office flop upon release, it performed well on home video and has steadily built up a cult following over the last quarter century. Fallen's audience rating currently sits at a rock-solid 72%, with many believing it to be one of Washington's most underrated films to date. And they're absolutely right, with its unnerving tone, slick style, twisty plot and killer central performance from Washington. It's absolutely a movie worth checking out, despite what the tomato meter might tell you. 
Number 6. High Tension Critics are allergic to a lot of things that general audiences will let slide, and that includes an unconvincing plot twist. And in the horror genre, there's perhaps no better example of that than the 2003 French slasher film High Tension. Reviewers rubbished the movie largely due to its extremely contrived climactic plot twist, feeling that it undermined the established suspense and derailed any and all rewatch value. And while High Tension nabbed a bleak C- cinema score from audiences upon release, it nevertheless fared better at home, currently sitting at a Rotten Tomatoes audience score of 67% from over 25,000 viewers. For a film that's so routinely criticised for being ruined by its silly ending, it's genuinely surprising that more than two-thirds of general audience members rated it positively. Then again, if you're somehow willing to let go of that third act mistake, the brutal violence and stomach-knotting tension leading up to it are pure catnip for gorehounds. Number 5. Stigmata Horror films centred around religion, and especially exorcisms, have a strange tendency to perform much better with general viewers than critics, perhaps because the latter have sat through literally hundreds of these things over the years. Case in point, 1999's Patricia Arquette starring supernatural horror Stigmata was disdained as unconvincing and poorly acted by reviewers, with Roger Ebert even calling it, quote, possibly the funniest movie ever made about Catholicism. For his performance, Gabriel Byrne, meanwhile, received a worse supporting actor Razzie nomination. Uh, yikes. But audiences en masse didn't much agree, with the film both being a solid box office success and, to date, sitting at 63% on the viewer tomato meter. Though Stigmata isn't exactly held up today as an underrated gem a la Fallen, it did nevertheless hit the basic Exorcist knockoff beats effectively enough to pass the sniff test with the mainstream. Sometimes that's enough. Number 4. Stay Alive Stay Alive was one of horror's great critical punching bags of the mid-2000s, a thoroughly risible piece of work in which those who die in a popular online video game start dying in real life. Reviews had almost nothing kind to say about Stay Alive, panning the writing, direction and performances across the board. And while the picture underperformed at the box office, it enjoyed a more welcoming reception on DVD, and currently sits at a 56% audience approval rating. While that may not be a sky-high figure, the fact that more than half of viewers enjoyed a movie which only 10% of critics did is staggering. It likely helps that Stay Alive has been reclaimed by genre fans in recent years as something of a campy cult classic, enough that writer-director William Brent Bell revealed, or maybe threatened, in 2022 that he's working on developing a sequel. Number 3. Queen of the Damned 2002's Queen of the Damned, a standalone sequel to Interview with the Vampire, was given a critical whipping upon release, with the press ridiculing its chaotic filmmaking style, absurd dialogue and bevy of unintentional comedy. The film did nevertheless top the box office in its opening weekend, though ultimately still underperformed against its budget, yet today sits at a solid 66% audience approval rating from more than 250,000 viewers almost an entire 50% higher than the critical metric of 17%. There are a few obvious explanations for this. First and foremost, Queen of the Damned was the final film role of singer-actress Alia, who died in a plane crash shortly after principal photography wrapped. The appeal of seeing her in her final screen role speaks for itself, while general viewers were also likely far more amenable to the film's MTV-style editing, shameless peddling of gore and skin, and generally campy vibe. Though author Anne Rice herself rubbished the film as, quote, mutilation of her work, it nevertheless won over the great many casual viewers just looking for some sexy, bloody, undemanding, vampiric silliness. Number 2. Five Nights at Freddy's Over the last year, no horror film has divided critics and audiences more starkly than the long-awaited big-screen adaptation of beloved video game Five Nights at Freddy's. Critics gave the movie a fair mauling, criticising its confusing lore, tame PG-13 rating, overlong runtime and lack of appeal for those who haven't touched the source material. With a mega 87% audience rating though, Five Nights went down a storm with its target demographic, who lauded it for capturing the spirit of the games even if it was fundamentally imperfect. On a mere $20 million budget, Five Nights at Freddy's grossed almost $300 million worldwide, making it the highest grossing horror film of 2023, ensuring that a sequel was fast-tracked into development. 
To be honest, it doesn't really feel like either side is wrong here. As a film on its own merits, Five Nights at Freddy's isn't particularly compelling for the uninitiated. But for fans who want to see the game well translated into live action, it seemingly gets just enough right, no matter its many, many shortcomings. Given the movie's massive success despite the critical scorn, it's fair to say that this burgeoning franchise has already established itself as totally critic-proof. Number 1. The Covenant We've saved the most epic chasm between critical and audience opinion for last, as 2006's supernatural horror The Covenant was utterly pilloried by the press, who felt that it was a laughable genre outing defined by poor acting, awful dialogue and wonky visual effects. Despite its mere 4% tomato meter rating, it received a more favourable B- cinema score from audiences, even though The Covenant still underperformed at the box office. However, it's another critically savaged horror film which enjoyed a more positive response at home, as almost two decades on, The Covenant has a 62% audience score, a whole 58% higher than what critics gave it. There is one easy way to explain the difference though. Films marketed aggressively towards teenage audiences tend to score highly no matter the reviews, and in the case of this movie, the cast, including the hunky likes of Stephen Strange, Sebastian Stan and Chase Crawford, likely did a world of good too.